Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another. Uh oh. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of According to Cos and Queen. And as always, I am Queen. And I am Cos. And this is According to Cos and Queen. Look how you picked it up right there. Fantastic. You guys that saw that on YouTube, uh, you know, she picked it up. I fumbled the ball. She picked it up and she ran with it. And things are moving, of course. If you're listening to us on Spotify, one of the streaming services, you didn't see. I didn't have my headphones on, so I started the show without them. I think we're both just fatigued. Oh, I'm delirious. (laughs) Just delirious with fatigue. It's the holiday season, everybody. And, of course, we appreciate you guys for continuing to support us and listen to us on all your streaming services. We are on Black With No Chaser Radio. Make sure that you download the Black With No Chaser app. All right. You can go to the Google Play Store or the iTunes uh, store and check that out. It's a lot of great podcast on that app as well. And you can see us on YouTube. All right. You know what to do. You know what's happening. Go to YouTube.com slash Brad Kamikaze Franklin. Here it is right here. Check us out. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. We're inching closer to a thousand subscribers slowly, steadily gaining new subscribers each week, new listeners each week, new people that are checking out the podcast. We appreciate it. And of course, this is brought to you by the Kundi Collection. I've got on one of my favorites here. This is Little Africa. All right. Mississippi being the cradle of civilization for black folk. In this country, all right, uh, the birthplace of America's music, all right, so we consider it to be Little Africa. That's what we call it. So make sure you go to www.kundicollective.com, www.kundicollective.com. Check out the Kundi Collection. It's not a clothing line. It is a uh, statement of your blackness and your spirituality. That's what we call it. You know, we've got designs for any state of mind. Make sure that you check that out as well. And we're getting on here. This is going to be our last show of 2023. We're going to take a little holiday hiatus, as we always do, and come back in the new year in 2024. This is the midway point of season three. This is episode 61. We're on our way to finishing up season three. Uh, And it's been a ride so far. We got 61 episodes. It's three seasons? Yeah, we're on season three right now. Three seasons, three different backdrops in each season. Like, you know, it's like an anthology we're putting it together. People are like following the visual journey. Mm. You know, they can see how we've gone, you know, from the different spots that we're at. Because we're literally, of course, as we always say, we're literally in the spot right now where our conversations take place. These are conversations that happen between a husband and wife in the privacy of our own home that we bring to you guys. From right here, if you're watching us on YouTube, this is where these conversations take place, usually uh, with some adult beverages and uh, some other things that happen, you know, as we're enjoying adult time in here. We won't get into all of that. But at any rate, if you have been, um, you know, under a rock here uh, in Mississippi, as it were, I think a lot of you guys are familiar with uh, the Internet social media chef uh Darius Cooks uh I called him Darius Crooks uh cuz he's a criminal uh but Darius Cooks uh who goes around the country and he gives reviews usually negative reviews on restaurants and uh he uh landed in the city of Jackson recently this is on the heels of you know Keith Lee you know uh almost burning Atlanta to the ground with his reviews but Darius uh Crooks came through the city of Jackson and gave his reviews of a few of the restaurants here. And as usual, it ended up taking a negative turn. Uh, and uh, he went after one of the staples, one of the the pillars of our community here, one of the pillars of Ferris Street, uh, the Red Apple Inn that I know you guys have seen on several documentaries. And Anthony Bourdain, uh, rest in peace, came down here and he ate at the uh, Big Apple Inn, uh, a storied restaurant and uh Darius Crook said that he ate there and he was not really a fan uh of what it looked like I think I don't know it kind of looked like he said that it tasted good and then he did a live later on that you know he was saying that he didn't like it and uh that of course got Jacksonians in an uproar I don't know how much of that you saw but uh yeah uh Outsiders coming in, painting a narrative 
for Jackson, Mississippi and these celebrity chefs and, and their opinions and their reviews on these restaurants and the reactions to these reviews. So when you saw all of the, the hubbub going on, you know, what were some of your first thoughts? My very first thought was, oh boy. Here we, Here, go. We go. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Um, mostly because Jacksonians are historically uh, going to go to bat for Jackson. Absolutely. Really, well, most of them. It really. It, yeah. Most of them. The majority. Yeah. The majority. Um, and so whether it's truthful, what he said, mm-hmm. or not. Mm-hmm. doesn't really matter right it, it you if you hit us with something it's taken emotionally initially anyway right off the top mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so uh you know i got i readied myself for those types of responses and they did not disappoint i personally don't eat the red rose sausage sandwich thing um uh, i actually don't find them appealing looking mm-hmm uh, but I've never been a fan of red rose sausage anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and we don't eat pork. However, mm-hmm. we are uh, all things Jackson. And Absolutely. You're just simply not going to come in and, you know, diss one of our staples. Right. You can say, I didn't like it. I'm not a fan. But this guy kind of took it to yeah. another level. He always manages to to just go super negative you can be critical he said it tasted like nothing yeah and i i I, you know i cook food Mm -hmm. i can look at this sandwich and tell that it has a taste absolutely tastes like nothing was just ridiculous he said he'd never seen red sausage dude that's crazy like maybe you haven't but that don't mean they don't exist because they do it's red rose sausage i mean well you know he's he's from atlanta so he you know red rose sausage might be you know beneath you know him coming from i think he just hadn't been exposed to it yeah red rose it's not something you like that's cool yeah red rose sausage is 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 not distinctly it's not distinctly a mississippi thing it's a southern thing but uh yeah red rose sausage is a thing right now going into my office every day the one of the the you know eat spots at you that i call it uh you know one of the short order kitchens you know they have a red rose sausage sandwich for breakfast that they have and it's not cut up like the big apple in but you know it's it's big 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 apple in um but it's red rose sausage. Like that's a thing. If you are in Mississippi, you're going to see red rose sausage in the stores. You know, and it's one thing to have an opinion. That's fine. I I don't care about you having an opinion, but you're going to be respectful. You're not going to come in here and you're not going to dog out. You know, one of our pillars. It's just not going to happen. And you know, like my bride said, I haven't eaten pork in 30 years. Okay, and that is the lifespan for a lot of people right now currently that, you know, are in this city. Uh, 30 years, I haven't eaten any pork. And I can tell you that one of the things that I did eat regularly when I was eating pork was uh, smokes Big and Big John's smokes and pig ear sandwiches. In fact, I was a bigger fan of the pig ear sandwich than I was of the smokes. And I got them at least two, three times a week. In the morning, I worked on Ferris Street a whole lot the last time that I was eating pork and I would walk up the street Uh, when I was working at the Jackson Advocate. I walk up the street and I get that greasy bag and come back and I would and I would eat it for breakfast. And uh, it's one of those tastes that I can still remember right now, even with me not having eaten pork, I can still remember that distinct taste. Uh, You know, I've even talked to you about trying to recreate it you know, with turkey or with something else, you know, we've actually had that conversation before with turkey sausage, trying to recreate the, you know, Big John's effect, uh, trying to recreate something that has the pig ear taste. That's not actually a pig ear. Like, it, you know, for us, it's a taste that people in Mississippi are familiar with, particularly in Jackson. And of course, there are some people across the world. I think uh, Gino Lee was just over uh, in another city at a festival that they were having at a food festival. And he sat up there and it was packed. Everybody has heard about, you know, 
Big Apple Inn. Everybody's heard about Big John's. Everybody's heard about these smokes and they want to try it. Uh, you know, outsiders, you know, slander will not be tolerated, period. It's just not going to happen. Uh, you know, you need to learn about the city that you're going to. Jackson has a classic case of having outsiders come in. Uh, the classic instance of this particular guy who has several instances where he has scammed people, taken money from people. Uh, he's been to court several times. He has had three restaurants, I believe, that, you know, had a grand opening, grand closing that he couldn't keep afloat. Uh, so he manages, of course, I think, to support himself by the engagement that he gets on social media. And the way that you get engagement these days is to be controversial and to be insightful. And uh, most of the cities that he goes to, really all of the cities that he goes to, but most of the restaurants that he goes to in those cities, he gives them a bad review of some kind, knowing that most of the people in that city are going to have an emotional attachment to those restaurants. And of course, the back and forth begins and the engagement goes up. But as far as, you know, being people who frequent restaurants and someone like yourself that does not have an extensive palate, you like what you like. We've talked about that before. Um, you know, what What should Jacksonians do in these instances? We always seem to have someone that comes down here and causes up a stir with their opinion. I don't like particularly the relationship that Jacksonians have with celebrities. Yes, um, yes, yes. It, it's bothersome for me. Uh, mm -hmm. The fact that they can regulate us to the point that they do is troublesome. Mm -hmm. Um just a couple of weeks back, Tabitha Brown played the city like a fiddle. <laughs> and she continues to play the city like a fiddle. And as a person who is, who, you know, speaks life into people and who I haven't written a book, but I don't think that, you know, I think I have value to the city. I'm rent ready at this point to pay somebody to go on social media and talk bad about me so I can get some more business and clients. Cause it seems to work. Uh, it's, it's, it's a playbook It's old as time mm -hmm. and it never ceases. However, what I will say is that the negative comments from Mr. Cooks has definitely generated more buzz for Gino Lee and, and the, mm -hmm. his family. Yeah. At Big John's because mm -hmm. I'm sure they are selling out today. They're well, you know, on, on Saturday, the day after the review took place on Saturday, uh, you know, they were packed. They were swamped. You know, people made an intentional effort to go down there. So in any instance, and I know that this happened with Keith Lee over in Atlanta as well. Anytime, you know, I've never seen an instance where a restaurant has gotten a bad review and there were not people there the next day trying to to try it out uh it almost always happens in that instance when people get bad reviews or somebody goes online and gives somebody a bad review it's like people are really just drawn to negativity uh and they're drawn to the negativity that exists within celebrity as well you know these celebrities come into these towns and you know because people know them or because they have some element of 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 notoriety to them some element of fame you know they use that to manipulate you know, the regular folk in these cities and they come to cities like Jackson, Mississippi, come to states like Mississippi, where they feel like they can manipulate and they can create this narrative. But, you know, uh, we have to be stronger in, you know, dispelling that. And we have to be stronger in our rebuttal of these folks. You know, Darius Crooks is and then I call him Crooks because he's a criminal. Uh, Darius Crooks is entitled to his opinion on uh Big Apple Inn. He's entitled to his opinion on what it tastes like. He did go to several other restaurants. He went to Johnny T's, gave Johnny T's a very good review. He went to Godfrey's. Uh, I think he said something about the greens and Godfrey's, but he enjoyed the food. He went to the Taste of Detroit that is out in Brandon. Uh, I don't know who sent him out there. Brandon, of course, for you listening, is on the outskirts. It's not in Jackson. It's a suburb. It's like the next county over, as a matter of fact. I don't know who sent him out there uh, to the taste of Detroit, but he went out there and uh, he said his weight was long. I think basically what he said in summary is that he could have walked back to Detroit 
in the amount of time that it took for them to fix his food in there. So, you know, there's always an air of negativity to that. But, you know, the element of celebrity that uh, lay people have to deal with, you know, is something. Speaking of which, uh, Diddy has been in the news a lot lately and a lot of people are talking about it. This is something that has kind of got the industry topsy turvy. He just recently responded to the allegations, but we know that uh, there were some allegations that Cassie, uh, his former girlfriend levied against him and former artist. And uh, he settled on that. I think 24 hours after she came to the forefront. But since then there have been several instances of women that have said that they have been uh, harassed uh, by him, uh, you know, held against their will, uh, touched inappropriately, all of these things that have come about. And, uh, here we are again, uh, you know, R. Kelly, Bill Cosby, Jonathan Majors, we're here once again, and we're here with somebody that's been a staple in the industry for a while. And you had some pretty strong thoughts on Diddy when we talked about it. Uh, do you think he did it? I think he did something. Hmm. I don't have any idea to what degree he was uh, involved, uh, but I definitely think that it's enough fire for enough smoke for there to be some fire here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Did he never really came across as an upstanding human being mm. anyway to me personally? Mm. Um, and so it's not I'm not really as awestruck about this situation I, I don't know why it, it it takes one person and then everybody else come. I can't figure that out for the life. Of I me. think it's the but, I, I think people are scared. And I think when they see one person come out, I think that gives them the confidence to be able to do it. I think that happens. In, that's happened in all those instances, I believe. I think lawyers go seek these people. I think mm. when they get their eye on somebody, especially if they have enough to proceed with pressing charges i mean putting whatever they do lawyers do uh i think they actually put up an effort to find people and because they can say well this girl has already come out she said this happened she said this happened then they're able to convince people to get on board hmm. i think it's a real effort being made on that regard well there was a law that was just passed i think one of them that there was a and I think it was supposed to take effect and it was supposed to end at a certain point where, you know, folks are able to take, you know, um, the people that they accuse, be able to take them to court and sue them for damages, even if they can't get them on a, you know, an actual criminal case. Uh, they opened the floodgates for people to be able to sue people who they feel like they have been harassed by. Uh, and this happened to be the case with Diddy. A lot of people in New York State you know, filed uh, their emotions, you know, immediately after Cassie did. Uh, Jamie Foxx has some allegations against him. Uh, it just, it seems that this continues to happen. Saw an interview with Aaron Hall that was an old interview uh, that was very telling, pretty disgusting. Now that you go back and look at it and, you know, come to find out, you know, he was in the mix of a lot of this stuff that was going on. Uh, it was wild. Did you see the the Aaron Hall thing? What did you What did you think about that? I thought he was drunk or high, and it might not have been either. But it was just a outrageous display. Outrageous. Just outrageous. Almost like, egregious. You can't be in your right mind speaking this way and knowing that it's being videoed. But at that time, uh, during that season. Mm -hmm. where Me Too hadn't been born yet and people, you know, did not have the understanding that they have now about sexual abuse and exploitation and trafficking and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a lot of things that are now a crime that we're conscious of that was happening back then that was regular life. So here we are. At least we thought it. It wasn't regular. It was still illegal then. And improper, but the attention that needed to be on it was not on it. And I, I think Diddy came up in that climate. I think Aaron Hall came up in that climate. I think Guy 
and Diddy and all those folks around that time. I think it was just in it, it was a, a boy. all of them. Yes, I think it was R. Kelly, Bill yes. Cosby, all of them. All of them came up in a time where these things were wrong and frowned upon, but they weren't being prosecuted. Mm -hmm. You know. And women were not telling the stories. People swept it under a rug. People got paid off. People got scared. You know, there's speculation that Diddy, you know, has harassed people and threatened people and, you know, used goons. And, you know, there was a story of him possibly hanging Wale, you know, over the balcony of a hotel. All of these things, uh, all of these stories, these myths that you have heard, these tall tales that you've heard about, you know, Diddy and the parties that he has the sex parties that he has uh the business practices all of these things and it's funny because it's like at some point when you are just doing it to this level somebody is going to break through and something is going to happen and the world is going to find out what's been going on this is is wild because there's not one bad boy artist that exists right now that has been successful i have asked several people that on several different mediums and there's not one. There's not one successful bad boy artist that still exists that's out right now that is no longer on bad boy or is on bad boy that has any money right now. That's Loon, that's Mace, Mark Curry, Danny DeCane, Day 26, Machine Gun Kelly, who left and started doing rock music. Uh, left Bad Boy and started doing rock music. He's got money, but he's not on Bad Boy anymore. Uh, Black about Faith. Faith was on Bad Boy. Faith was on Bad Boy, but she's not on Bad Boy anymore. She's doing decent. She's cool, but she was also Biggie's widow. Mm. Biggie's dead. Uh, Black Rob is dead. G Depp is is uh in jail. Uh, who else do we have there? The making of the band, the band disbanded. They're not there anymore. Uh, Eight Ball and MJG was on Bad Boy for a moment. That ended quickly. He probably knew not to fool over them. Uh, it's a lot of folks, but there's not one Bad Boy artist that we've seen that we can look to. I mean, I think Bad Boy's legacy is still built on Puffy and Biggie and the Locks. And the locks had to almost threaten him to get out of their contract and actually to get their money at the end of the day, which is wild. So I don't know. Maybe the signals and the signs were there all along that P. Diddy is exactly who a lot of us thought that he was. Yeah. That's a, it's a crazy thing. It's a crazy thing. So we'll keep watching that and see how that goes, man, as we go into the new year. Um, I want to talk about something, too, before we get to the end and talk about uh, reflections for 2023 here in season three. Uh, it is the holiday season. Uh, you are a spiritualist and, uh, you know, you do help people on their spiritual journey and their healing journey. We are in that season where a lot of people. Uh, are struggling and a lot of people are hurting. A lot of people are trying to figure out how to make it through the holiday season because they have lost loved ones or they don't, you know, have any loved ones close to them, or maybe they don't have great memories of the holiday season. I know a lot of people like that uh, who are just not fans of it because they don't have good memories of it or they didn't celebrate it coming up. What is your advice to people who come to you and they talk about, the seasonal emotional shift that they have, the holiday blues, as they call it? Uh, the very first and most important thing that I would advise is to feel it. Um, don't try to distract yourself from the emotion that you feel attached to your grief uh, in the holiday season. Feel it. Cry, scream, laugh. Whatever you need to do to feel it, grief does not go away because you don't give attention to it. So if you're triggered, you know, take a moment to sit in that trigger. Um, t take a moment to think about, give honor to the people who you have lost. Um, try to surround yourself with jolliness and happiness. Mm -hmm. Put yourself in a place where you can celebrate the people that are no longer with you. 
um, around people who will help you celebrate and not judge you for wanting to do that. Um, give permission to yourself to mourn if you need to, or whatever it is that you're, you're feeling like you need to do, pay attention to whatever your body and your spirit is calling forward for you and be intentional about it. Don't try to hide from it. Um, it is a hard time. I, I'm definitely having a hard time. Uh, but I have people who watch me to make sure that I'm okay. So make sure your circle is clean and make sure that it has people who pay attention to you and who can fill in the gaps for you when you're having low moments. I didn't even realize that I had that until I needed it and it was there. So you may have that and just not be paying attention to it. Uh, but lean on the people who love you and who understand what you're going through um, and talk to somebody, find you somebody, a spirit, spiritual coach or a therapist or a really good friend who can listen without judgment. Find somebody to talk about that you can share your memories with, that you can get the things that are in your mind and your heart suffering out. Um, so just pay attention to what you're feeling and be attentive to what you need and give yourself what you need. Give yourself some grace. Yeah. Um, and those are all fantastic points. Uh, you know, you, you'll always be affected by it in some shape, form or fashion. It doesn't go away. I, I particularly now, uh, I'm definitely connected to and, and understand the grief uh, for people, especially people that have lost people uh, during the holiday season. I lost my father on Christmas Eve. And every time it gets around this year, you know, there's not going to be a Christmas that comes around now until, uh, you know, now until I'm no longer on this earth, it's not going to be a Christmas in which we are not reminded of his passing because it happened as we were gathering and getting ready to celebrate Christmas. Uh, so Christmas Eve is, is uh, a time of reflection in that regard. And it's not going to go away. Uh, it's going to always be there. Uh, and of course you have to be empathetic for others. Uh, it is not a joyous time of year for everyone. You have to try to make it, you know, as my bride said, you have to make it the best that you possibly can and be understanding and be compassionate. Uh, because again, there are a lot of people who are struggling uh, at this time of year and struggling to go into the new year. So just be mindful of it. Enjoy your holiday season. Enjoy your Christmas. Enjoy your Kwanzaa, your Hanukkah, whatever it is that you celebrate. Uh, enjoy it and enjoy it with the people that you love. But going into 2024, before we close out this episode, episode 61, uh, talk about your 2023 and what some of your uh, aspirations are for 2024 before they see us on the other side. Uh. 2023 was a very reflective year for me. Um, I spent a whole lot of time assessing and trying to understand. I'll be going into my 50th year next year. And I mm -hmm. think it's just right around the time where uh, reflection takes, takes you up a notch Mm -hmm. uh, because you don't get to reflect and sit. You got to reflect and move because mm -hmm. now time is of the essence. So this year has been a lot about understanding who I have been so that I can cherish that person when I go forward into who I am becoming. Um, and I'm thankful for just being aware that that's happening. Um, this year I did something that I've wanted to do for many, many years, and that is a spiritual retreat, mm -hmm. uh, the Breathe and Let Go retreat. It just happened a couple of weeks ago, and it just kind of reminded me that it takes a village. Yes. Um, you know, a lot of times when you're on a spiritual journey, it feels lonely. It feels very alone whether you have people around you or not because can't nobody do this part of the journey with you or for you but you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it gets really lonely so the breathe and let go retreat reminded me that 
there are many other people feeling lonely, but we have a village and a community um, here in Jackson that supports each other. We just needed to be in the same place at the same time. So I'm thankful for that. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what spirit does with the elevation of this retreat. Um, I am looking forward to watching people individually and kind of watching some sort of organic uh, movement to happen with this, with us collectively. Mm -hmm. So if you missed the breathe, and let go healing retreat we will be doing this annually but we'll also be doing some things throughout the year to cultivate this community um so be on the lookout for that you can follow the breathe and let go healing retreat on ig at blg healing retreat um and we'll be doing more of that so i am going into 2024 looking forward to um, what's next for me. I know that I'm becoming more centered around family and I'm becoming more intentional about uh, elevation, even more intentional than before. Um, and what it looks like to my child. What is she seeing when she sees me? What is my son seeing? What are my bonus kids seeing? It's weird, but that's never really been a focus for me. Uh, kind of in the back of my head, I knew that was there, but it wasn't at the forefront, and it's moving its way to the forefront uh, emphatically. So I'm looking forward to seeing what that turns into. Um, and I'm looking forward to branching out and releasing fear over some other things that I'm looking to accomplish. I won't mention now, mm -hmm. but... Stay uh, stay with me. Hold on tight for the ride because wherever God says go, I'm going. I've never been shy about that. So stay tuned. I am uh, working on getting to that point that you're at. I'm working on letting go and letting things happen as they happen. Uh, and it has been a journey. I'm getting better at it. Still not where I need to be, but I'm not where I was previously on that. 2023 was, you know, a year of change, a year of adjusting. Uh, it was it was it was a prosperous year. I will say that, you know, it it was a, a year where I learned some things about me and also learned some things that, you know, I might not have been really ready to kind of realize. Uh, so working on that and, you know, working on working well with others and working on being a better friend and a better husband and a better father uh, and a better businessman and listening more and being more tolerant and not uh, being so definite in my thoughts and not being so stubborn in my thoughts and being malleable and opening myself up to opportunities where I may have otherwise cut myself off because I take a hard stance on things so classically taking a hard stance on things. And I stay put when I take that stance and I'm learning that sometimes you got to be malleable, especially if you're expecting other people to be malleable, you got to be malleable. So in 2024, you know, I'm looking to try to collaborate more with people, form partnerships, uh, nurture friendships, uh, get better in my marriage, get better as a parent, uh, get better as a citizen of the planet Earth uh, to try and just be the best I can be and be the best I can be for my family and my household and my community and, you know, continue to push towards success and prosperity for this family, thinking of ways that my wife and I continue to work together because I think that I found that there is strength and there has been success when we work together, once we have figured out how to actually work together. Uh, and that took some time to get to that point. So we're looking for that to happen and looking for 2024 to be a year of prosperity. And we're looking forward to you guys continuing to support us in 2024. When we get back in 2024, uh, with the next episode as we continue and come back with the second half of uh, season three, uh, you know, we're looking to 
you know, continue to be innovative on this podcast and talk about all the things you like and actually start taking some of your questions and some of your queries. Uh, we like doing that, you know, answer your questions, questions that you have for us, questions that you have about marriage and dating and our story and our journey and the things that are happening in pop culture. Uh, we're going to continue to do that, continue to try to be as interesting as we possibly can. because We're just again. We're having conversations uh, with you guys that we have with each other right here in these seats right here. So make sure that you are enjoying your time with family. Make sure you are enjoying your holidays and make sure you rest. Uh, I am learning the uh, the benefits of, you know, resting and restoring. My bride has been on me about that and been adamant about that and taking breaks and giving things time. Uh, you know, there was a time where we would have done this all the way through the holiday season. There was a time where we'd be trying yeah, to put stuff yeah, together. Time you would have did it. Well, yeah. Well, I would have did it. <laughs> I would have tried you to get saw you to me, do it. I would have been fussing and cussing before and after this camera yeah. went off. So, you know, I have, we're going to take a, take a break, you know, mid-season break on the podcast. Going to take a mid-season break on Third Coast Radio and Good Things Jackson, the other radio shows that I host uh, here in Mississippi. And uh, we're just going to go through and learn to enjoy doing absolutely nothing. I think that's cool. Doing nothing is doing something. Because you're doing nothing. That's right. But you're doing something at the end of the day. Something is happening when you do nothing. Something is happening when you're doing nothing. That's good. That's good. Almost T-shirt worthy. I don't it's know if important. they get it or not. I think people miss that. I mean, it, it gets to, you know, gets down in you that you're not doing something, but actually something's happening. You are resting. You are rebuilding, refreshing, recharging. All of those things are necessary in order to do something. So doing nothing is something. Doing nothing is doing something. What? That is profound. So we're going to end on that note. Thank you guys again for joining us again. I uh, hope you have a great end to 2023 going into 2024. Enjoy your holidays. Enjoy the new year. We're going to be back stronger than ever with more bangers in 2024, man. Uh, so y'all stick around. All right. So for according to guys and queen, I am guys. We're going to see you guys in 2024. All right. Peace. <laughs>